Hello everyone, Mike Rempel from Excel Bytes with today's Excel blog post. Today we're going to take a look at the average ifs function and how you need to structure your syntax and formula based on the different type of criteria that you have. So let's see how we can do that in Excel. So here I have a data range that has numbers in column A, the text for those numbers in column B, dates in C, and quantities that we want to average in column D. And I'm going to show you a few different ways that you may need to structure your criteria based on the type of criteria that you have. Now the first thing I want to show you is the difference between the average if and average ifs function. Now I tend to use average ifs even if I only have one criteria, which is how the average if function is structured, because it's a little more logical. And let me give you an example. Let's say I want to average the quantities in column D if the number in column A is the number 2. And I'm going to use the average if function. So I type equals AV, I go down to average if, and I hit tab. Now the first thing it wants is a range, but it doesn't really clearly say what type of range you want there. In this case, it's the range of your criteria. So that is the uh, list that we have in column A. So I'll choose that. I'll hit comma. Now it wants what's my criteria, and that's the number 2, comma, and what's my average range. Those are the numbers in column D. F4, and I'll close my parentheses, hit enter, and it gives me 13.9. And that is the formula that we have in order to do that. So notice, if I have a actual numeric value, I can just enter that numeric value and not have to use any other type of structure or punctuation with that. Now with the average ifs function, if I type equal average, go down to average ifs, hit tab, it's saying the first thing I want is the average range. And it's very clear about that. So I want to highlight this range here that I'm going to average, comma, what's my criteria range? That's what I have in column A, comma. And then what's my criteria? The number two, close parentheses, hit enter, and I get the same answer. But it's a little more logical because what you do first is you indicate what the range is that you want to average. Then you structure your criteria range, your criteria one, your criteria range two, criteria two, et cetera, et cetera. So it's a little more logically structured. So we're going to use average ifs for the rest of the examples, but it could be uh, it's very similar when you're using just the average if function. So next, what if we want to average the numbers in column D based on the values in column B, which is text, so the, the word two. So I'm going to type equals, go down to average ifs, tab. My average range, again, is going to consistently be what we have in column D. The criteria range is what I have in column B here, F4, comma. And the criteria... I'm going to put it in quotes, T-W-O, close my quotes, close my parentheses, hit enter, and I get the correct value, 13.9. So again, the difference between the first example with average ifs and the second one, when you use a number, you can just enter that number, but when it's text, you need to put that in quotes. Next, I want it to be equal to a date that I have in column C. Now notice that these are formatted as date. You can see I up here in the, my ribbon, it's when I click on anything in column C, it says it's formatted as date. So I'm going to type equal AV, go down to average ifs. Again, my average range is what we have in column D. My criteria range is what we have in column C, F4, comma. And then my criteria, even though it's a date, which in essence is a number, since it's the way it's formatted as a date, I need to put that in quotes. So I'm going to say 1, 11, 20, 17, 
close my quote, close my parentheses, hit enter, and it gives me the value of 11, which is the average of all the quantities in column D where the date in column C is January 11th. Now let's say I want it to be greater than or equal to that same date. I'm just going to copy it down since the formula is pretty much the same. And inside the quote, I'm just going to put greater than or equal to, hit enter, and I get a value of 14.17. So again, when I want to add a operation greater than or equal to, less than or equal to, or greater than or less than, and I put that whole string in quotes, and that's how you need to structure it for that. Now let's see what we need to do if we want to have it greater than or equal to, but reference a date that's in a cell. So I'm going to type equals average ifs tab. My average range again is in column D. My criteria range is in column C. And if I did it similarly, if I put my quote greater than or equal to referenced cell H3, close quote, close parentheses, hit enter, I get a divide by zero error because Excel doesn't like that structure. When you're referencing a date along with an operation, what you need to do is actually put the operation in quotes and then concatenate that with an ampersand with the cell that you're referencing. I'll hit enter and now I get my correct value. So again when you're referencing a date that's in a cell you need to put your operations, the ampersand, and concatenate that with the cell reference that you want uh, to be your criteria. Now here we're going to actually do very similar structure but I'm going to have it be greater than or equal to H3, less than or equal to I3. So the structure is very similar, equal, average ifs. Again, my average range is what we have here. My criteria range one is the list of dates. And my criteria, again, parentheses, greater than or equal to, close parentheses, ampersand, H3, comma. Now my criteria range 2, again, is the same set of dates. I'm going to lock that. And my criteria 2 is going to be quotes less than or equal to, close that quote, ampersand, and I'll select I3, close my parentheses, hit enter, and now I get the average of column D, the quantity, when it's between January 15th and February 9th. Again, structured the same way, but I've added a second set of criteria with a criteria range of column C, the dates, and the criteria less than or equal to the date that I had in I3. So that's how you need to structure the various types of criteria when you're using the average ifs function in Excel. And there you have it. I hope you like what you see. If you do like what you see here, please take a minute to share this post on your favorite social network. I can be found on Facebook, Google+, Twitter, LinkedIn, and YouTube. So I hope you enjoy this. If you'd like to see more, please feel free to stop by my website, excel-bytes.com, and I hope you subscribe. So have a great day and happy excelling.